Hey guys, it's Lumen. Welcome to the video version of my article, A Guide to the Fairy Stone Bottles. If you want to read the text article, check out the link in the description below. Many thanks to Rennie for letting me write on the blog section of her website, PDX Academy. As always, product is your number one option for all translated news from the JP server, so go check out the website and bookmark it for future reference. Without further ado, the article. A Guide to the Fairy Stone Bottles. I love all these massive grinding festivals like Sin Dragons and Key Heroes and Mystics. Said no one ever. Well guess what? Welcome to Gung Ho's third iteration of this event type, officially known as the Star Twine Fairies. Despite Yama P tweeting to the contrary, it's still another grinding festival, with the same package of super busted top rarity cards, interesting middle rarity cards, and a whole new set of powerful farmable assists. Thankfully, Gung Ho removed the trash bottom rarity cards that normally occupy a huge portion of the lineup and stuffed in some Godfest exclusives instead, so at least there's some changes for the better. Overall, I still think that the farmables alone make the event a net positive for the players, and it'll only get more exciting as the top rarity cards dominate the meta for months to come. Who knew plants and boats would be the defining leaders in 2021? That being said, because it is a grinding festival, it's probably a good idea to know why you're spending tens of hours farming seeds and watering cans. Welcome to my guide on the new fairy stone bottles in which I give my take on the value and application of each bottle evolution. Couple of things to note before I dive in. Each bottle evolution corresponds to an actual event card, which means there are 11 bottle variants. Furthermore, the trades are all 5 to 1. And since there are four tiers of token exchanges, the farming required to procure the evolution materials needed for each bottle variant will be quite intensive. As always, be mindful of your mental stamina. This is a game we play for our own entertainment, so don't play if you feel like it's too much of a chore. That said, let's get right into the evolutions. Bottled Hibiscus Though the Awakenings are quite nice as a secondary recovery and damage augmentation equip, the main value of this bottle is its perfect bicolor active for ranking dungeons. The inclusion of hearts helps reduce ping and allows you to take advantage of Esfua, a major source of style points. It also doesn't carry any extra animation, which means the active doesn't waste any extra time with unnecessary effects. Unfortunately, there has been a huge influx of new red OE equips, which substantially dampens this bottle's value in endgame play. In particular, Pad Academy has given players plenty of great options such as Hera Ur Senpai's ID or Pet Caretaking Club Red Riding Hood's ID. Orb Enhanced Awakenings are also useless for farming because of their random nature, though the active could possibly be used to overcome otherwise impassable combo shields. Bottled Hydrangea There's no other way to put it. This equip is broken. This is the first farmable equipped to have 3 water rows and also carries the newly buffed 80 HP for big damage. In terms of farming, this has amazing synergy with base machine Noah in terms of both awakenings and active as the full heal will be extremely handy when swiping the full board after a preemptive. As for endgame, I could see it being used on future teams leading Natsuru and Valkana just for the awakenings as the active itself is dead weight. The long cooldown becomes a benefit in this case since you don't want the active coming up. Bottle Dahlia This bottle simply has 4 light OE and a heavy skyfall boost active that won't make much of an impact on most aspects of gameplay. The main value of this equip is that it's pretty inexpensive compared to other options. In fact, the only other equips with 4 or more light OE are Archery Club Ray of Hope, Apollo's ID, Tasca's Magical Wing Broom, Dazan, and Zavolta Annihilator. Unfortunately, Light is looking like the worst attribute for the foreseeable future, with its best leaders such as Mia and Academy Kyo falling well short of the power that other leads such as Nautilus, Royal Oak, Rosalind, and Natsuru bring to the table. Maybe Phyllis can represent Light in the meta, but crosses are pretty awkward for most players to work with. Bottled Sexafridge I don't know if you noticed, but Transform cards have been dominating the game for almost two years now ever since the release of Yugi. Since transformation is achieved via active skill, an emphasis on mustering enough skill boosts to transform quickly has greatly affected both team building and egg machines. 
Thus, equips that provided large amounts of effective skill boost via haste, delay, or some other method had became extremely popular. Some early examples include Demon's Blood Talismans and Dark Magician card. Even now, powerful clips such as Harvest Loot and Dream Dimension Detective's Shelling Ford card continue to garner serious mileage as elite skill boost equip options, which is why this bottle evolution is amazing as a farmable equip that boasts a tremendous 3 effective skill boost. Though it is easy to nitpick the inferiority of this equip compared to similar options such as Harvest Loot, Demon Blood Talismans, and Shinji and Rei Keychains, the main advantage of this bottle is in its accessibility compared to its top rarity contemporaries. Though the bottle evolution may not be as groundbreaking as an equip with 3 effective skill boosts due to the earlier debut of the Wicked Key of Lust, it still has great merit since the bottle doesn't gimp a card's damage output. In fact, the bottle gives a card an optional power boost via TPA. While the accompanying board change might be awkward to deal with for some teams when tackling endgame dungeons, the bicolor and two turn haste combination can be immensely valuable for ranking, as evidenced by the popularity of Christmas Sonya builds for ranking dungeons in years prior. In fact, this bottle evolution is the only two turn haste and bicolor board active that generates light orbs, which may be the difference maker in a future ranking. Bottle Diania Hunting Bigfoot this is the equip to use. Though the minus HP and minus recovery will undoubtedly turn some people away, the killer selection here is absolutely ridiculous. I previously said that Usui's Binding Seal was the greatest thing ever for training Arena 2, and Gung Ho decided to prove me wrong with this monstrosity. Personally, I think it's a superior equip for two reasons. One, the balanced type spawns are significantly more troublesome to kill than the healer type spawns. Winter Plum Virtue, Jinhua, and Elemental of Gold Glimmer, Genie, feel like half the build process for a training arena too, while Awoken Spica usually gets bulldozed without much thought. Depends on the build, of course. Try making some dumb water based builds. Spica's a nightmare. The killer selection is much more forgiving when taking into account various seasonal event invades, such as New Year Reach and Beach Varroa. This is only a minor consideration, but a consideration nonetheless. While the debut of Training Arena 3 may have felt like Training Arena 2 was pushed into obsolescence, many players will not have the builds to efficiently farm the latest and greatest normal dungeon. Thus, this equip is still valuable for many players whose most practical option is to build for Training Arena 2, which is becoming increasingly more accessible by the day. After all, builds have already reached the farmable level. Bottled Aconite First farmable equipped with a physical killer? First farmable equipped with machine killer? First equipped to have both? Killers will always be situationally useful at best because of their activation requirements. However, Compared to the expensive top priority alternatives, this is just unbelievably accessible. I can't really think of a particular dungeon this would be absolutely amazing for, but the killer coverage will definitely be valuable for both farming and ranking. Bottled Amanita At first glance, this seems like an inferior Fuo equip compared to Furaku's Binding Seal, and thus I initially dismissed it as trash. However, did you know that this equip is the only other equip besides Eris' Golden Apple to have two negative attack awakenings? Now, negative attack might seem like an absolutely terrible awakening in an endgame oriented around ridiculous damage output, but someone on the PDX Discord server mentioned how this equip could be useful for those challenges where you try to limit damage as much as possible, such as in the Exploration Dungeon. While most teams rely on an automatic follow-up attack for those dungeons, which neutralizes the value of the Fua, it may be potentially useful for something. The equip could also be decent on pure utility subs such as Paddy and Christmas Pallone, although these subs are mostly being phased out in the latest endgame builds due to rapidly increasing damage requirements. One notable exception is Gung Ho Belial. Bottled Ipamiya the only farmable inheritable multi-turn Fujin active in the game that's also tied for second lowest cooldown amongst all options, farmable or not? I'll take one of these, despite the mostly unwanted Oak Skyfall effect neutralizing some of its value for swipe farming and endgame teams based around other attributes. It also provides 1.6 times the recovery with all the team recovery awakenings, which is pretty amazing for a farmable considering only 4 other cards have the same amount of team RCV 
all from egg machines. However, this feels like an equip that looks nice, but won't see any real use. We'll see. Bottled Pansy. At first glance, this seems like an unremarkable equip with a nice active and what looks like a mishmash of awakenings. However, the leader that currently stands above all others could actually make real use of this bottle evolution. Yes, I'm talking about Nautilus. How would this work? Remember that Nautilus's final form active converts light orbs to wood orbs on an extremely short cooldown. However, orb enhanced awakenings only enhance newly dropped orbs of their respective attributes, which means that wood OE only enhances newly skyfall wood orbs and will not enhance light orbs. Thus, wood OE loses a lot of value on Nautilus because all the converted orbs aren't enhanced. With this bottle evolution, however, both wood OE and light OE serve to enhance both wood orbs and light orbs, which means that there will be significantly more enhanced wood orbs after using Nautilus as active. I'm not saying this is some kind of optimal equip for Nautilus, it's just more of a shower thought. The 80 HP is also nice damage, especially with the lower threshold buff making Awakening much better in terms of consistency. Bottle Daffodil This is probably the least valuable equip form among all the bottle evolutions, but still has some niche value. At the cost of 2500 HP and 1000 attack, the equip card gains 1000 RCV. The best use for this is to attach it on a pure recovery stick that has a low recovery stat, but a ton of heal OE. Hello, Mel. Yeah, otherwise I don't really see much use for this. The active is somewhat interesting in that the orb generation guarantees activation of skill charge and guard break on a pretty low cooldown. I suppose you could use it to check against enemy full board generation, which has become more popular recently, but most of the time, you also take a lot of preemptive damage and want to heal, but can't since the active doesn't generate heal orbs. Bottled Rafflesia Another equip that trades HP and recovery for massive damage, this one is a little different in that it packs a brutal punch versus one type with a god killer and an 80 HP, instead of packing two killers like Usui Binding Seal. While the damage is definitely valuable for farming and ranking, I think the true value lies in the fast inheritable Void Void active. Though the farmable Mystic Miasma Stone Armlet provides a two turn Void Void effect and has a shorter cooldown, it also comes with a self inflicted skill bind which is probably worse than this bottle evolution's lock effect. That being said, the lock is still something to deal with so don't forget about it when using this in your build. Which bottles should I make? The answer is that it depends on your box, your priorities as a player, and your monster point budget. In general, making one of every bottle is a good idea, but not everyone needs bottle daffodil or can afford to spend 900,000 MP. Thus, I will try to take a couple of relatable perspectives that you may be able to draw insight from. New players. Assuming you are new and have no MP to buy additional bottles, I would prioritize making the bottle Sexy Fridge and the bottle Ipamia. The bottle Sexy Fridge is a great effective skill boost equip that will probably be a staple for most new players' transform teams as amassing skill boost is very difficult with a limited box. Meanwhile, I had a hard time choosing the second option, but the bottle Ipamia stood out to me as an inheritable multi-turn fusion active, which is pretty difficult to obtain considering that most inheritable multi-turn fusion actives are locked behind extremely expensive top rarity cards from various different machines. The next best option after bottle Ipamia is a bottom rarity collab card and move from Demon Slayer, which players could only roll for during a limited two week window. Of course, you should ideally farm the evolution materials and then hold off on evolving the bottles until you need to make a particular assist evolution form for a specific purpose. However, if you can't hold out until then, make those two. Budget Restricted Players For experienced but budget restricted players, basically poor players who have played for a long time, it is also good to save the mats until you actually need to make a certain bottle form. Most players probably won't fit in this perspective because MP has been so plentiful lately. However, if you can only buy a limited amount of bottles and wish to evolve them right away, then I would prioritize the evolutions in this order. Free Bottle 1 Bottled Hydrangea Free Bottle 2 Bottled Hibiscus Bottle 1 100,000 MP Bottled Ipamia Bottle 2 200,000 MP Bottled Dianea Bottle 3 300,000 MP Bottled Aconite Bottle 4 400,000 MP Bottled Rafflesia Bottle 5 500,000 MP Bottle Saxi Fridge Bottle 6 600,000 MP Bottled Dahlia Bottle 7 700,000 MP 
Bottled Pansy. Bottle 8, 800,000 MP. Bottled Amanita. Bottle 9, 900,000 MP. Bottled Daffodil. This list is pretty subjective regardless of how objective I want to be, so take this suggestion with a grain of salt and make your own priority list based on your personal needs. For example, if you only care for ranking, I can see bottled hibiscus replacing the first 5 slots on this list. Farmers, rankers, and endgame players. At this point, you should be able to figure out exactly what you need or want. However, if you want to see my personal checklist, 6 bottled hibiscus, 5 bottled hydrangea, 1 bottled Ipomoea, 2 bottled Dianea, 2 bottled Aconite, 2 bottled Rafflesia, 6 bottled Saxifrage, 1 bottled Dahlia, 1 bottled Amanita, 1 bottled Pansy, 1 bottled Daffodil. Final note and the most important requirement. While Star Twine Fairies is extremely exciting, farming the evolution materials will be much more arduous than you think. Therefore, the most important requirement for players farming the event will probably be the resolve to keep going day in and day out to grind for the assist evolutions. My advice is to make a schedule or daily routine. For example, I just don't farm at all. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? <laughs> With all that said, I wish each and every one of you the best of luck in rolling and grinding this event. Thank you guys for watching, good luck, and have fun.